my name's Parker, and uh, I'm from Alaska originally. We're from I, Alaska? Yeah. So I what was, brought you here? Um, like, when I was 17, my dad and I got a... So how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 21. 21, so you've been on the street since 17? Uh, yeah. Okay, and where were your parents at, at this time? Um, my mom died when I was little, and like, my dad is still in Alaska. So. Oh, really? Do you still contact him now? Like, do you guys um, have any connection? For a while we did, but like, he's a heroin addict, so his phone kind of got cut off because he couldn't afford it, I guess. And, okay. Uh, so I don't really have any. So you don't have no family at, at here whatsoever in New York? No. So what is it that really keeps you in New York then if you have no family here? Uh, well, like, my boyfriend is from Williamsburg and, okay. like, his mom and his grandmother live around here. So okay. uh, I guess his family is what keeps me here. Okay. And Okay. Uh, so do you have any any stories of you living in the street? Do you have anything that you could give somebody information about? Like, let's say somebody is going through the same problems that you're going through. What can you give? Like, what's an advice that you could give someone that's like, you know, like lost and stuff like that? Like, what is it that you could like? Um, I mean, because uh, I know it's hard. And I know it's not easy living in the streets, you know? How do you cope with it? What is it that keeps you still, you know? What is it, do you have any ambition? Or what is it that you really want to do? I mean, ideally, I think I would like to uh, learn some sort of trade because I don't like staying in one spot for very long. So like, if I have that sort of skill set, that's something you can take anywhere, you know? Okay. I don't know. Like, I know when I first uh, became homeless, like, I was kind of afraid to ask for help. Okay. You know, like, kind of like a pride thing, I guess, or yes. whatever. Yes, yes. And that kind of uh, held me back for a while. So I guess, like, be not being afraid to, like, ask for what you ask want. For, yeah, what, you what want. I need is something that uh, was really helpful when I so, okay. it. So what is it that you want to do? You said you want to do a trade, right? Yeah. So like you have so, so okay. So what are you doing to make that happen? Uh, right now, like I'm working with this place called Breaking Grounds, and they're working on getting us an apartment. My boyfriend and I, and from there, like they help you connect with like, uh, like different. Like they'll help you connect with schools or. Jobs okay. and stuff so like that. So I hope you get yourself set up for success, pretty much. Yeah. So you probably have uh, a goal then. Yeah. That you really want to do. So you're not just out here getting money. You see, that's why I'm trying to tell people, like, it's not just giving. You don't know what, what they really want to do until you just really sit down and talk to them. Because they're human beings. So that's literally what I want to do this for. I want to make sure that you guys have, because at the end of the day, you guys are people. Like I said, you guys have emotions just because whatever life handed to you doesn't make you better. I'm not better than you, you're not better than me. We're equal, exactly. we're equal here. We're here to help each other. And if, like I said, if your story could go and give somebody else inspiration, like, oh, you know what? She actually still has ambition to still want to do things, regardless of her situation that right. she's dealing with, you know? And that's what's really, I'm actually shocked that you still have, you know, and it's good, it's good, because that shows that you really want to do something better and you, you have the capable of doing it. You know that though, right? Yeah. You just got to put yourself to it and you just got to stick with it. Exactly. So what is it that you are doing now besides, you know, working and stuff like that? What is it that you do for entertainment? What is it that you like to do? Um, I like, like I draw and I like 
Do you have any of the drawings in your bag? Uh, not with me right okay. now. Okay. What is it that you like to draw? Uh, I just do like little, like cartoons, I guess. Oh, like, like anime? Not quite anime. Just, like what, uh, like Pokemon and stuff like that? No, um, I don't know. It's just whatever I'm feeling at the time. Oh, so you um, just sketch whatever comes in your mind? I guess, yeah. Okay. And like, I like making clothes, stuff like that. It's like really cool to me. Okay. So I have another question. So what is the hardest thing of living in the streets? What, um, what can you say that it's the hardest thing? Like, um, probably just like, the thing I find most annoying is like not being able to shower regularly. Okay. It's kind of frustrating. Okay. And like, um, like in different states, you know, like places are not like, like letting you sleep or sit or be like exist anywhere is like difficult sometimes. Like, okay. like in um, Nevada, I got a ticket because I was sitting on a bench okay. and apparently it's even though it's a public bench, because I'm homeless, I wasn't allowed to sit there. Really? And it's just like, well, like, everybody else is allowed to sit on these benches, but because I have a big backpack, like, yeah. that's so goofy. Yes, yes. Or like in Texas, um, we got stopped because we were walking, you're not allowed to walk with big backpacks unless you're exercising. <laughs> it's like, really? In Texas? Apparently. It was, it was like this small town. They just didn't want us to be there, I guess. Okay. So you've been, so you've been in Texas. You've been where else? Uh, I've been like Oregon, Washington, California, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming. Wow. Uh, I've been to I've been to like half the United States. But New York is the one where you stood the longest, right? Yeah. So what is it about New York that other states doesn't have? Like, what is it? Uh, there's like. I like that there's always something like going on, like there's something for everybody. And like, uh, most communities here have been like really welcoming and re like receptive of me, I guess. Yes. Like, uh, people say that the East Coast is like, people are mean, but I think it's just that people are straightforward and direct. Yes, like, yes, yes. And I like yes. that because, you know, from my experience, like, out west, people are kind of passive aggressive. Like, they, they won't. They judge you before they even talk to you, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll yes. ask what time it is, and I'll be like, I don't have it. Like, mm -hmm. Just because how do you look? Yeah. Yes. They, like, don't even listen to what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, very difficult sometimes. Okay, so I have another question now. So, what do you do when it's winter? Um, how do you stay warm? How do you how do you do that? I mean, people are, have been very generous as far as like warm clothing and tents okay. and stuff like that. Like, there's this uh, group like North Brooklyn Mutual Aid, and they're really nice. They uh, like every like a couple times a month, sanitation will come, and it's okay. really helpful because we get to throw away our garbage. Okay, but like. Um, when they first started doing it, they were a little more aggressive. Like, if you weren't there, they would just throw everything away. So, like, they did a sweep like that one time, and they took, like, literally all of our stuff. And uh, this, the group, North Brooklyn Mutual Aid, they bought us new tents and sleeping bags and, like, gallons of water. And then they gave us $100 just to get, like, whatever other stuff we needed that they didn't necessarily bring. And it was just, like so nice that people like actually uh, care about you guys enough. and yeah. take the initiative to actually treat you guys like human beings, right? Right, like it's so cool. They're working with us right now like to rent a container so that way they don't have to get sanitation to do, to do the sweeps. So okay. like they want to help us in maintaining garbage removal and like uh, like my partner and I, we scrap metal for money, you okay, know, so okay. they're like trying to get us a truck right now to just because, you know, like transportation is really important in kind of getting yourself together sometimes because, you know, like 
if you have to walk everywhere or like hop the train or something like it can be difficult uh, going to like job interviews and mm -hmm. getting with your social worker and stuff mm -hmm. like that so it's mm -hmm. really cool that they wanna they're so, working to help us out like that so I have a question what's the scariest or thing that you've seen in the street because I know you have stories but what's um, the craziest thing that you were like whoa like what the hell did I just see right now Oh, uh, that's a tough one. There's a lot of like. Give me the give me the worst one that you could possibly think off your head where like it made an impact on you. Well, this one time um, in New Orleans, my one of my friends had overdosed, right? And I usually take the initiative to carry naloxone with me because I know a lot of my friends use and just like for their safety but I didn't have any at that time so there's uh, an abandoned house that some of my other friends were staying in and so I ran there because I knew that they had it and the person the only person that had it tried to make me buy it while my like my friend is blue dying on the floor and they tried to make me pay for this one the one thing that like I needed to save their life and okay. it's just like we're in the same position we we sleep in the same dirt we eat the same trash and you're trying to take my money to save somebody's life like that's just really appalling to me that like we can be in the same situation and like you don't have like the like it was just really so what happened Crazy. to your friend? Uh, he, he was around? fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, we ended up, you know, getting what we needed. Called okay. an ambulance, so. Okay, and I see you have a lot of tattoos. Can you tell me what those tattoos mean? Starting the one with your, the one by your eyebrow. What does that mean? Uh, it's just my friend's social security number. So uh, you put it on your eyebrow? Yeah. Why? I, I just, <laughs> I like it. I think it's kind of goofy. Uh, okay. Most of my tattoos don't like really like just something that something that would just like, happen at the moment yeah you just felt it was right to do and you just did it yeah pretty much so, so explain to me the other one the ones you have the one right there by your forearm uh what's that one this guy yeah what's that uh it's just a little sun i guess it's what the first it? tattoo i got actually that i did right it myself there? okay oh you did yeah oh wow so you you do art and you like to do tattoos too yeah. So you, you do a lot of things then to keep busy. Yeah, it's something to do, I guess. Okay, so then tell me what is it that if you would like have your story to be heard, what is it that you would want to for people to know about you or something? Um, I guess that, I mean, nothing. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, basically. Like, I mean, I have a difficult time, like, functioning well in a standard, like, regular job, house, living, normally kind of thing. It just kind of makes me really depressed. And, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Like, so that's why I started traveling, I guess, and it's like... If whenever I just can't stand to do what I'm doing anymore, you know, I just go and I do something else because that's what I'd like to do and that's what makes me happy. And it's like so you're more you know, you're more of like a free spirit. I guess. You don't want to be in, in a cage in a system where like you have to go to work and do the same thing over and over again. Right, and it's not that I have any problem with working itself. Like for a while, like my friends and I were doing. farm work I guess you know like okay we went and we were doing sugar beets in North Dakota and like in California for a while we were doing like grapes and stuff like that and I have no problem working it's just like I like being able to pack up and go when I want to you know 
free spirit. Yeah. You don't want to be told when you when you could do something or when can you go. You just want to be able to do it whenever you're ready to do it. Pretty much, I guess. Okay. So before we go, is there anything you want to say? Um, I don't know. I think that about wraps it up. Okay. All right. So thank you, Amber, for everything. Parker. Parker. Sorry. So. so We'll see you hopefully in a week or two and we'll see where you at from there.